you away, Lako, right? <laughs> Sorry, I know I've asked you ten times already. I'm a little nervous. <sighs> it's like a dream. It's gone. <laughs> It's always fun to take a look at launch titles and see how enjoyable they actually were. Regardless of how the system turned out, the bullshit hype and subsequent hating that went with the Weave's release was astronomical. As usual, people bought certain games at release that they would have never considered purchasing otherwise. Red Steel here for the Nintendo Wii is one of those games. Red Steel earns its honorary place in video game history as the first first person shooter to be released using the Wii's new style of control. As it turns out, the control style is the only unique thing going for Red Steel. It's very evident that everything else involved in the development of this title was rushed quite a bit. Okay, so using the Wii Remote to blast enemies is fun. As many expected, the fluid movement from dual analog sticks is sacrificed for the ability to feel like you're actually holding a gun as you pinpoint enemies on the screen using the aiming rectile prior to blowing them to pieces. It's a new experience and feels rewarding too. Shooting enemies by stretching out your hand is fun, but just how practical is it for the length of an entire game? The answer is going to be different for different people, but there were many times where I missed being able to easily control my character without the jitteriness that comes with not being an expert at keeping my hands perfectly still at all times. To me, it felt like pointing out enemies with the Wii Remote was something that I would enjoy sometimes, as it does bring a new level of interactivity, but it's not a method of control that I'd like to commit to for the rest of my gaming existence. At least not with the way Red Steel does it. After my amazement with the controls wore off about a fourth of my way through this, I realized just what kind of game Red Steel really was. It was the most generic, dull, boring ass first person shooter I had ever seen. I was pretty much just marathoning every stock location ever created for these games with tons of brain dead enemies. Even locations that should have looked different felt exactly the same. Red Steel was quite void of personality which was humorous considering its lame attempt at one. Red Steel has this bogus story where you're an American dude whose girlfriend's dad is in the Japanese Mafia. Some random shit goes down, she gets herself kidnapped, and it's up to you to save her and fix everything. What this actually nets you is some of the lamest and most cringeworthy dialogue and voice acting to be featured in a video game in a very long time. No one is ever developed and straight from the get-go you won't ever care about the main character, girlfriend, or any of the enemies. It's quite sad. Another annoying feature about Red Steel is the sword fighting. While thankfully sparse, it's something that'll definitely cause Harrison Ford to prematurely roll around in his grave. You see, despite the fact that your girlfriend has been kidnapped and she has absolutely nothing to do with whatever bullshit the old man is feuding with, when these generic thugs come at you with a sword, or even worse, a baseball bat held like a sword, it's time to remember your honor. Your serious weaponry gets tucked away so you can swing the Wii Remote like a madman hoping to club an enemy to death with your sword. There's nothing graceful to be found here. These small parts feel out of place, clunky, and unnecessary. It's the Wii Remote that keeps this game feeling interesting and fresh in the beginning, as it's otherwise just another boring first-person shooter without a soul. However, the Wii Remote doesn't really work that well, and so even this doesn't act as a saving grace. After a while, I just never wanted to touch this game again. Red Steel features enough polish to keep the gameplay from ever feeling outright bad, but then it never exceeds anything average either. There are some late game additions to your available maneuvers too, but they also don't act as saving graces. If you're seriously starving for a first person shooter, and I realize that there aren't many other first person shooters to choose from on the Wii, I still wouldn't recommend Red Steel. Spending hard earned money on something so average would be ludicrous. I give Red Steel for the Nintendo Wii a 5 out of 10.